This is Jazz Casual, and I'm Ralph Gleason. You've been listening to the Jerry Mulligan Quartet, one of the most delightful quartets in modern jazz today. They've been playing a composition by the leader, Jerry Mulligan, entitled Four by Three. And now we're going to have a chance to talk to Jerry for a moment. Welcome to Jazz Casual, Jerry. Thank you, Ralph. You've uh, been experimenting, it seems to me, with switching back and forth from large groups to small groups. Uh, well, is there a reason for this, other than economics? Yeah, it's not really so much experimenting. Uh, uh, I had the, the uh, big band together for oh, about two years, uh -huh. and uh, I got lonely for the little band again. Why? It's uh, it's easier, and uh, and it, you, you wind up playing differently. Uh, how do you how do you play differently? Well, a big band is more restricting because you have uh, the more people you have in a band, the more organized the arrangements have to be. Uh -huh. With the quartet, we many times will. Uh, decide to play a tune that we've never played before and in front of an audience we'll make up an arrangement as we go along just like that and we did it sometimes with the big band too but uh, you have better luck and probably uh, can be a bit more consistent with the small band do you take things that you did with the big band and bring them down to the small group no actually it's the other way around we uh, took small band yeah. things a lot of the tunes that we played with the uh, quartet for years uh -huh. I had arrangements made of those based on the quartet arrangement. Is it, a, is it, uh, does it give you problems in thinking about playing then, to play it first with the quartet and then go up to the big band and then back down? Yes, it has. There's some of the things that, uh, since we've, we've gone back to playing them with the quartet, uh, I think it happens to Bobby and I both, that uh, we're so in the habit now of playing the big band arrangements of them that we miss the, <laughs> the, the big band parts. In fact, it happened to me the other night. We were playing something that we played with the big band, and I totally forgot the uh, the quartet arrangement. I was all set to go into some band part of the thing that wasn't there. <laughs> it's a do bit you, of confusion. Do you do you rehearse the things for the small group too at all? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, for instance, a thing like that uh, four for three that we just mm -hmm. played is not something that you could uh, just uh, start playing. Mm -hmm. But you know, we have. It, the rehearsals are really mainly to learn the songs themselves. Mm -hmm. The arrangements are very sketchy and uh, very fragmentary, which I'd prefer it that way so we have more room to stretch out. Well, now in a big band, uh, would it be um, possible to stretch numbers out longer? Uh, oh, yes. Sure. Is it easier to do that with a small group than with the big band? Well, that's that depends on the arrangements themselves. Some ar arrangements lend themselves to being added to and stretched out. One of the albums that we made with the big band was recorded uh, on a concert tour. Uh -huh. It was called the Concert Jazz Band on Tour. And uh, in going over the material for the album and editing the stuff and hearing all of the various tapes from various places, I thought it would be a good idea to include two tracks of the same piece on it mm -hmm. because in that way it illustrated uh, better than you could with words how differently the same arrangement can could mm. sound on a different night under different circumstances. And as it happens, the thing we played is a blues thing called uh, Go Home, which was based on a, a, a blues tune of uh, uh, Ben Webster's. And uh, we wound up playing it so differently, leaving parts of it out and playing it at a different tempo and uh, adding sections to it, that uh, it's almost a totally different piece. This all depends on your mood at the moment, how things feel to you. And mm -hmm. so do you do this with the, with the small group, too? Oh, yeah. change around like sure. that? Sure. Do you, uh, have you, of course, you must have all musicians do, I'm sure I thought about what uh, the future of jazz is going to be, where this music that you've been involved in all your life is going to go. Do you have any uh, concepts of what this is going to be like? Well, I guess most of the concepts I have of it are, are personal, yeah. because uh, I'm, I'm not very concerned with what jazz does as a whole. I'm only concerned with my own, uh, where, where I'm going and where I'm going. Where does it go for Jerry Mulligan? Yes. Yeah. I think that's true of anybody that's uh, involved with it. You, sure. uh, my personal involvement is, is such that uh, I don't really think too much about what anybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's another side to that, too. I haven't had much inspiration to think much about what anybody else is doing because I don't really like a lot of the directions that jazz has taken in the last five or six years. Uh-huh. Uh, such as? Well, I think that there's uh, a bit uh, more concentrating on such things as uh, funk and hard-blowing and, mm. and uh, soul for the sake of itself that uh, 
they've kind of lost me to me there's a lot of different ways to play and i don't like to uh, uh, see these trends of uh, people getting isolated into their little rut you know mm -hmm. to me if you're in a rut you're in a rut and it doesn't matter whether that rut is far out or far in yeah it's restrictive in any sense and also the need to uh, intellectualize about mm -hmm. jazz and uh, let's uh, let's everybody sit down and write a symphony mm -hmm. uh, there's there's been a great deal of that and I think most of it is is bound to be unsuccessful because mm -hmm. the techniques just don't go together you look for more freedom and personal playing then? Well, I don't know if you can put it that way, because some of the uh, attempts at, at freedom, or complete yeah. freedom, say, yeah. are chaotic. Yeah. I think one of the things about jazz that, uh, that's attractive is the uh, order of it. It is orderly. It should be, and organized. And if inside that order, you have a great deal of freedom. But you can't truly have freedom unless you've got order to begin with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that people uh, mention to me when they talk of the Jerry Mulligan small groups is the fact that you don't use a piano player. Why is this? Well, of course, in the first place, uh, you don't need a piano. Uh, for that matter, I guess you don't really need any particular instrument, but it's, it's become a, a habit yeah. of thinking to have the piano in the rhythm section. And it occurred to me that the piano was being used as a, a crutch for the other instruments. Uh, because the piano sits and uh, has a function where he's, he's uh, playing the chords all the time. And I found that uh, a great deal of the time he was getting in my way. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not necessarily something that I uh, recommend for all of jazz. I, I, should, you know, I'm say, I should start saying, piano players are out. No more pianos in <laughs> jazz, right? Ah, but you play the piano <laughs> yourself. Well, that's, that's yeah. the other reason. You yeah. see, if, uh, with the small band, if I ever want to get a chance to play the piano, if I have a piano player there, I'll, I'd never, never have the heart to tell him, <laughs> say, get up, I want to play now. But uh, Bobby and I both play yeah. with the group, and it makes for uh, uh, a bit of variety for us and a chance to put our horns down once in a while, mm -hmm. and it also changes the sound of the group. Are you going to play something for us now in which you do touch the piano? Yes, lightly? I'm going to play a, a ballad on uh, Darn That Dream. I'd love to hear it. Thank, Thank you. you. Jerry Mulligan and his quartet with Gus Johnson on drums and Bob Brookmeyer on trombone and Wyatt Ruther on bass and Jerry Mulligan on baritone and piano are going to play Darn That Dreaming. 